Since the dawn of Minecraft multiplayer, communities of players have lived together peacefully. But what would happen if they were split into different civilizations? Well, today, I created a public server to test how players would react to different environments by creating a giant map and splitting them into three different civilizations, the desert, jungle, and the arctic. Each civilization's goal is to survive for an entire month, but different events will be taking place that make this quite challenging, including a dangerous blood moon that increases mob spawns, supply drops with useful loot inside, and eventually invading other civilizations. Everyone is also in hardcore mode, meaning they only have one life. Which will become the most advanced region, and what will happen when the borders fall? Welcome to the story of Minecraft Civilization. So, we begin in the jungle region. Players started by collecting wood and exploring their surroundings, eventually finding a jungle village with useful tools, armor, and most importantly, a huge supply of food from the straw huts. This put the jungle civilization in a great position, allowing them to start mining for materials. But the desert civilization weren't so lucky. They spawned next to a mesa mountain in what seemed like an endless desert biome. However, on the other side of the mountain, there was a gold rush town, which got quickly dismantled by their players for wooden tools. One player found the town's gold mine and sprinted inside, not realizing there was a slight drop, and became the first player to be eliminated. So, now is probably a good time to explain the role that each player decided to take. When players joined the server, they were given the choice of three classes. First is Farmer, which gives bonus crops and extra loot from mobs. The second option is Miner, which gives you permanent fortune and lets you break stone faster. And lastly is Warrior, which lets you deal more damage and move faster. And these classes would help each player greatly advance their civilization. The desert still had no sustainable food source, so the farmers started planting the crops they spawned with, while the miners quickly gathered resources from the gold mine and brought water buckets from an underground lake to the community farm. The arctic civilization were in a similar boat to the desert. Although they had lots of wood, this icy tundra had no food at all, so players began exploring in a huge group and came across a giant gateway into a dwarven fortress. This contained food, armor, and even different ores inside, making them the first civilization to obtain diamonds. But they still needed a sustainable food source, so led by the best potato farmer- wait, I read that wrong. Second best potato farmer in Minecraft, Squid Kid. They built a huge farm inside of the fortress, while the miners came across an ice cave that they could use as a water source for growing crops. Everything was looking good for these civilizations, until the sun went down, and on day two, the first world event begun. The hunger event. Every player now had to survive through extreme hunger for the next Minecraft day, and in hardcore, this was even more of a challenge than normal. But before we see what each civilization does in this event, let's venture into the civilization of Teyvat from today's sponsor, Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact is an open world RPG game available on PC, Android, iOS, and PlayStation, where you step into a vast magical world and begin your adventure on the continent of Teyvat. Here, there are seven elements that you can gain control over using different types of characters, and each element has its own map region and cities. Genshin Impact just released the brand new 2.5 update, so for a limited time, you can now get returning characters Raiden Shogun and Sanganomi Kokomi, as well as the brand new character Yaimiko. Each character also has new story quests. There's also a new boss that wields a giant katana, three new shadowy husk enemies, as well as a ton of new events, like designing your own obstacle course domain with traps, coins, and launch pads, becoming a bartender at a tavern, and brewing drinks for your customers, and even exploring the mysterious Enkonomia map for chests and other secrets. So, be sure to download Genshin Impact. This special code will give you 60 Primo Gems and 5 Adventurers experience. Thanks to Genshin Impact for sponsoring this video, and now, let's continue. The desert civilization needed to come up with some new ideas for collecting food, so a group of miners had the idea of breaking cobwebs, and using the string to craft fishing rods, and creating a small pond near the desert community farm. By catching and cooking fish, they actually managed to sustain themselves really well. The farmers also had a good supply of baked potatoes, but another group of players with a slightly questionable approach decided to kill mobs as a food source as rotten flesh was technically useful now. But this quickly backfired when they angered an enderman, wiping out three players instantly. The desert now had the least players out of every civilization. Meanwhile, Squid Kid and the other Arctic players took a much more agricultural approach, creating giant farms that managed to keep everyone alive until a guy fell off a mountain. Oh my god! And then three players who were underground starved. 
In the jungle, they not only had an abundance of food, but someone even predicted that there would be a hunger event by watching other civilization videos. I kept this cow safe because I knew there'd be a hunger event. But this region had one huge downside. This dense jungle surrounding them was dark enough for mobs to spawn, and a creeper wandered into the village, wiping out one of their players. No! Reminding them that they would have to be really organized to survive, so players begun sharing out buckets of milk, until Starkiller gathered everyone to explore a huge 1.18 cave that he found. I have a tunnel to the deep dark if you guys need some stuff. A tunnel to the deep dark? Where is it? I mean, I made a staircase, because I figured we all want to go back Guys, there. it's a trap! Don't go in! Uh, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm <laughs> kidding. But while all the players from the jungle village were distracted, their cow was assassinated by a mystery player. Where's the cow? Where's the cow? DB, where's the cow? Killed the cow! Players begun wondering, was this just a simple mistake, or was someone looking to cause conflict in this civilization? Oh, diamonds already, there's no way. I'm goaded. Lapis and diamonds straight away. Oh, yes, please be a giant vein. Please be, yes! Woo! I can feel my power! So, day two came to an end, and the hunger event was finally over. This hit the desert and arctic civilizations the hardest, but they were about to be given a chance to advance their civilization much further. Because on the morning of day three, the next world event begun. Border expansion. Players could now travel anywhere in their region, as they were previously limited to a 100 by 100 area. They also get given the coordinates of an ancient structure with powerful loot inside, including diamonds and enchanted books. In the jungle civilization, a player by the name of Starkiller stood up as a much needed leader after their cow was assassinated, and organized a group of five players with the warrior class to go on an expedition to the nearby structure. Bro, Everyone wait, wait. come with us! So they crossed the river into this unexplored territory, and carefully navigated the jungle in the middle of the night, eventually arriving at a huge Aztec temple. They quickly realized that the players they saw inside of this structure weren't part of the jungle civilization. Oh! Oh, these are people! These are people! And a huge battle with the natives commenced. But while everyone was distracted, two mysterious players dug into the side of the temple and sneakily took all of the diamonds, enchanted books, and other useful items, leaving all of the low tier items like wheat in the chests to avoid suspicion. And it worked. Oh my gosh, we're here! Oh, this is. This was terrible, what? The rest of the players arrived at the room and just assumed the loot wasn't very good, leaving the structure empty-handed, desperate for more gear. Guys, I have a gift for anyone who's a warrior. I'm a warrior, I'm a warrior, I'm a in the desert region, a group of five players had just arrived at a giant desert pyramid and quickly planned an attack against the natives. They were met with even more danger than the jungle, as these temple gods wielded fire aspect swords. Oh, fire aspect, all right. Although they were low in numbers, they successfully cleared out the entrance, disarmed the trap, and discovered that the gods were coming from spawners. Oh, there's a spawner. However, instead of breaking them, they decided to clear out the doorway and tunnel directly to the loot room, finding a notch apple, diamonds, and a huge supply of TNT, which which would definitely be useful if they decided to invade another region. Although they had a rough start, the structures and great communication in the Desert Kingdom set them on a great path towards advancing, despite their previous losses. The Arctic Kingdom brought a group of 10 players to their nearby structure, eventually arriving at a giant ice temple. They noticed the native snowmen inside, and this deceivingly friendly name caused one player to make a break for the promised loot. But this immediately backfired, as he was swarmed by snowmen, then fell into almost every trap in the temple, and met an unfortunate end. The other arctic players knew they had to come up with a plan, so half of them gathered on top of the temple and placed water, while Squid Kid broke into the side and melted the snowmen using lava. One by one they cleared out the spawners, and while this was happening, I flew into the loot room and decided to check a chest just to make sure they actually had loot inside, and I set off a TNT trap that I planted myself. Somehow I managed to place water just before it exploded and genuinely couldn't believe what just happened. Oh. My. So I placed back the chest while the arctic players cleared out the final few snowmen, and entered the loot room finding a notch apple, diamonds, and other amazing loot. The arctic and desert civilizations spent the rest of day 4 trying to advance further, while the jungle civilizations seemed to just be relaxing in the jungle village. Everyone jump if you like Genshin Impact. Yo! Yo! Genshin Impact, hell yeah, baby! Staying on surface actually turned out to be useful for the Jungle Kingdom, as on day 5, the next world event shortly begun. Town building. Players now had to travel towards a beacon within their region, and spend the next 10 Minecraft days building a town center. Staff then get to vote on each build, allowing each civilization to earn a different tier of supply drop depending on their position. Each contained different amounts of diamonds, food, and books depending on their tier, and the worst supply drop also has an interesting
exciting surprise inside. And guys, before we continue any further, this video took a very long time to make since everything is custom. So if you want to see more content like this and help out the channel, you should definitely subscribe if you're in that 90% who aren't already. I'm going to keep making these crazy videos and you definitely don't want to miss them. Also, if you want to be in these civilization videos, then follow me on Twitter. That's where I post the applications. The Arctic and Desert civilizations knew they had limited blocks to build with and had to be resourceful. So the Arctic collected blocks from the Dwarven Fortress, shared some leaves, and collected snow to use on their winter town. But the desert had a slightly different approach, bringing the zombie of their fallen teammate who suffocated in sand at the beginning of the game all the way to their new town location by boat. Yeah, we'll check on this guy later. Eventually, after a long journey, each civilization migrated to their new location and begun creating the foundations of their town centers. After the towns had made some progress, I decided to visit each civilization to see how they were getting along. When I teleported to the jungle, I saw them creating a panda village with a slightly small population. Welcome to Panda Village. There's two pandas. Oh, yeah, no, there were, there were there's more. three. There's like four. That. The jungle town actually looked really good. Their hard work, combined with Starkiller's leadership, gave them a very good chance of winning the build competition. But this is where the upcoming King Election event made things very interesting. During this event, one player from every civilization civilization will be voted as king, giving them double health, an elytra built into their armor, and a protection 5 crown. In the jungle, Starkiller was currently in line for the throne, already being given a gold crown to wear by his people. But another jungle player by the name of Eyes had been caving since day one, slowly becoming the most powerful player out of every civilization. Oh, what? Yes, please be a seven, man. This looks like it's bigger. Three. Yup, it's seven. That's it. I'm full diamond. Oh, what? How did I just find a spawner? That's crazy. Water protection. Of all the things I could have found in the chest, water protection. I'll take the string. Oh, water protection two. Man, come on, a golden apple though. Eyes arrived on surface, determined to become king, and met up with his ally Saitama, who informed him about the player in his way. The star guy is being really charismatic and like, I think we kill him before he even gets selected. They traveled to the island next to the town to secretly inchon, knowing that a revolution may have to take place for Eyes to get the throne, and they didn't want to give their possible assassination targets any more gear than necessary. Oh my, you guys are Yo, stacked. I'm incredibly stacked, and you know, there's some funky business going on over there that we're gonna have to, uh... Iron out. People think uh, people think they're in charge. The player then stumbled into them on the beach, and they quickly hid the enchantment table. Hello, sir. Uh, you're you're kind of low. Uh, wasn't the cave with the uh, how is it called um, block thingy? They were trying to get him to leave so they could keep enchanting, but he kept talking. But we have a lot of stuff, so. Um, but they I might have, have some stuff because... over there on the island. So I go there and I. Yeah, yeah, I talked to them about it, yeah, okay. So, they were finally alone again, until moments later when Starkiller himself and his second-in-command crossed the river to greet Eyes and Saitama into the civilization with a friendly welcome that wasn't very reciprocated. Hey, guys. Yeah. Who's, I, who's I can already tell here? that you guys have done an amazing job. I can already tell. Do you guys- wait, There's I heard rumors. Me. I've heard rumors that you guys have enough for enchantment tables. No, I found this in a dungeon. Okay. okay, gentlemen, thank you so much for what you guys have done in the mines. Oh yeah, man, this guy waffling. And... Uh, this is this is going great. <laughs> yeah, did you guys know who took the leather? Oh, did you guys know who took the leather? Oh. Oh man, I literally, I'm enchanted. He's like, do you guys have an enchant table? I was like, nah, man, I found this. With Eyes and Saitama rising extreme suspicion, Starkiller and his friend returned to the town while their allies menacingly plotted to take the throne. Yeah, this guy seems nice, but he's definitely getting uh, drilled and we're taking charge here. I don't know what they're thinking. They decided their best plan of action was to try and win over the other jungle members. But when they arrived at the village, they didn't blend in too well. Yeah, there's there's stuff in here. There's stuff uh, in here. Do you have apples? Can I have apples? Three guys. Pandas like crazy. Yo. Yo, yo, hello? Star, yeah, this kid's got enchants. Where do you get the Wait, enchants? Izzy, you Stop have an enchanting table? table? Huh? Well, I'm not what you're talking about. Izzy, you need to drop that enchanting table because we were like trying to. Table, boy. I don't know what you're talking about, I found this in the chest. His dreams of becoming king were slowly fading. As the villagers somehow figured out that he was hiding an enchantment table, the enchanted diamond armor definitely wasn't suspicious. But after a suggestion from Saitama, he finally decided to share the enchantment table, attempting to win over the people. Yo guys, I've got a public servant announcement. I was trolling, What's here up? you go. Yo guys, enchantments! But they still didn't seem convinced. Yo guys, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna elect myself king, sound good? Um... No. 
I then took a trip to the Arctic civilization, who were getting along much better than the jungle. Okay. You can carve the pumpkin off with the snowman. There's like three songs going on at the same time. I really liked the look of that town until I noticed the most cursed statue ever. Who is making Among Us? <laughs> Everybody slide to the left. Slide to the left. Slide to the left. It's just all complete. No, you failed. You failed. You failed sliding to the left. I then checked out the Deserts Town Center, and just as I arrived, this happened. Genshin Impact. If okay, we should make the game. Hey, hey, guys, it's. Ah! <laughs> No! Wait, did kill them? The zombie killed him. Moments after, Invictable finally arrived at the town after 30 minutes of boating across the desert. I put more dedication into getting this stupid undead member of our civilization back to the base than I put into any of my schoolwork. But I mean, that's that's fine, you know? It, it's justifiable. What? Where did he go? No! Wait, never mind. Everything's okay. Oh my god. I can see the finish line. How did we lose someone building? What? This is absolutely terrible and sad, but we have a replacement teammate, so I mean, is it really that bad? Back in the jungle, the question of who should become king needed an answer, with the king's election quickly approaching. Eyes argued for aristocracy, while Starkiller wanted the people to decide, and a revolution was slowly brewing. No says who? Stars the king. No, I think Stars, Stars the king, right? the king based on what? King. I say, I say Star we let the people elect who they want. Okay, and they're okay. gonna elect you because you've been here waffling the whole time, but I just gave you enchants and a full diamond and a warrior, so I don't know what gives you qualification over me. I didn't say anything. I just said we should let the people decide. I know, but you've been here talking them up like you're Jim Jones for 40 minutes, so they're gonna pick you. I'll, all I'm gonna say is vote for who you want. You're, you're waffling right now, mate. I've got a question. If you yeah, like and... Leader, where hey, can I, please, hey can I please get some... Getting us the right, enchant guys, table, what do you guys, mean? Guys, 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 yeah. guys. On your own. You just I got some lapis to start. Yeah, mate, and if I did if you didn't do that, you'd be- Man, you're unenchanted iron. You're gonna get two hit by the other teams. Oh, I'm gonna get two hit. Bro, do you know how to combo? Nah. Do I know how to combo no. now? Oh my god. So, the town building came to an end, and it was now time for me and the other staff members to vote, deciding which civilization would get which tier of supply drop. So, we begun in the Desert Kingdom, who had transformed themselves into a prosperous and resourceful nation. We're gonna start here. So right here, we have a statue of, of you, actually. Oh Our my- overlords. That is a very yeah. accurate statue. It looks, uh, well, there's a second statue. We have our lovely king's throne built inside a pyramid, which actually features an actual real grass block. Wow. And then we have probably our greatest achievement, the Necromancy Laboratory, <laughs> where we somehow brought one of our members back from the dead. I we seriously have no idea how you did this. <laughs> this is literally just ridiculous. Oh, who has food? Got, oh my, food. that's insanely cool. Yes, in the app, uh, we build a, uh, a mine to get us resources automatically as it goes in and out of the cave, which everyone is actually kind of blocking the minecart right now, but when yeah. they go, <laughs> it works very well. Next, we visited the Arctic Kingdom, who definitely had the most spirits out of every nation. So here we have the, the, the statue to the source of everyone in the city, right, in the town. Mm, I don't so know how I feel about uh, this. Here we have the principal tree, the best tree of the, the source must tree. Wow, that is a very cool tree. I like the decorations and I like the star on top. It's very good. And then you go where we all reunite every Sunday. Uh, <laughs> Church of oh. Soup to a Genshin Impact map. Wow, that's a very that's a very divine decoration. We have some villagers having a snowball fight. It looks very good. Here we have some uh, skin song. Yo, this is so good. Oh, you have okay. to Dude, this is such a good ice rink. And finally, the Jungle Kingdom, who had a very aesthetic town and even law, despite their political tension. As listen, in case it wasn't obvious enough, everyone here works super hard on this. Everyone here has done a phenomenal job. <laughs> All oh, right, sure, sure, sure. right here we have a skull with emerald eyes to honor those who have passed. Whoa. In case it wasn't obvious, we have an emphasis on emeralds because they are green. That is a lot of emerald blocks. We are complete green thumbs. The one I'm really proud of is our food farm. Thanks to Jack, he has single-handedly saved us from starvation. That is insane. That is a very good farm. This is yeah. the line. This is where, this is where those very brave and willing <laughs> go. And down here is the docks. Wow, that, these are grand ships. Oh, my favorite thing is this, the monkey statue. We have to honor Le Monk. We are in the jungle after all. Monkey, uh, monkey, giant monkey. 
Yes. Thank you for the civilization tour. This this will be getting a very strong vote. So the votes were then collected, and here are the results. In first place were the Jungle Kingdom. Let's go, boys. In second place were the Desert Kingdom. Good enough, honestly, I'll take it. And unfortunately, in last place were the Arctic. This meant that the jungle got the best supply drop, containing 64 diamond ore, 32 golden apples, a huge amount of food, iron, lapis, and most importantly, 4 netherite ingots. It was delivered to their town center on my very advanced technology, the chicken parachute. Players swarmed the supply drop, and Starkiller's friend managed to get 64 diamond ore, which could definitely turn the tides in the upcoming election. But, I managed to get 4 netherite ingots from the supply drop. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, PvP inside of Civilizations also turns on when the election starts, so this was about to get interesting. The desert got the second best supply drop, containing half a stack of diamond ore, 16 golden apples, lapis, books, and a ton of food. One player with the minor class used his fortune ability, as well as a fortune pickaxe that he enchanted, to actually double the diamonds, which was pretty impressive. Okay, we okay. Finished. And the arctic got the worst supply drop, containing 16 diamond ore, a decent amount of food, a small amount of iron, 3 books, oh, and um, I forgot to mention, it also contained a Ravager. The Arctic's harmony had descended into chaos, and their players were furious. Silver, you killed three of us. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it had to be done. But it did, it did make some good content, okay? Are three innocent people's lives to you content? Is that all we need for content? <laughs> That's all we need for content! You're just eating for content! You make me think you know that! My attempts to calm them down weren't working. So, I started the next world event, and the much-anticipated king election finally begun. Each civilization now had to decide on a player to receive the king powers and lead them to victory. The Arctic Kingdom definitely needed some strong leadership to recover from the Ravager, as they now had the least players out of every civilization. Civilization, so that people gathered around an igloo to begin their election. Let's have three people stand up and say they want to be the leader. And then hey, yo. So we need some sort of order, we need some sort of like control, we need some sort of teamwork, it's especially not teamwork. I can speak with complete clarity. Guys, don't be persuaded. I mean, he just that's has cool. an accent. The people of the Arctic were ruthless and deemed most inadequate, but they narrowed down the vote to two candidates, and a player named Chungledor was chosen as the king. Thank you for everyone that believed in me. I will do my absolute best to provide everything that you could wish for. We will Switch win it. this competition. <laughs> We will win it, and we will destroy the enemy kingdoms. There is your crown, Jungle Boy. Yo! The Desert Kingdom had a very organized election, instantly deciding on two candidates to vote between. Everyone's gonna go on a side that they want to vote for, and whoever had no, not yet. Okay, well, go. <laughs> I guess this is decided. Am I king? And on his throne, he was crowned as the king of the desert. Yo! No! The jungle election was by far the most chaotic. During my tour of the town build, a group of players who believed in a militaristic future for the jungle nation secretly gathered with eyes in the panda village, pledging their support for his leadership. Kill the panda, who cares? <laughs> no, I'm making a statement, kill him all! No, that's a, yeah, I don't want to be rude, but he's just like, he's just shouting over everything anyone says non-stop, and yeah, he's saying the same six things. I don't, like, I don't think we can drop him. I can drop them. These were the same players that stole the temple loot and assassinated the village cow on day one, so it wasn't surprising they joined forces. With these new players on his side, the debate that would decide the future of the jungle nation begun. Look at look at Izzy right here, bro. Look at the gear in that. Yeah, yeah he's got ear. That's the only thing he has. That's the only thing he has. Y'all are bowing down to him. Y'all are bowing down to him just because he has gear. Okay, so what, is, what does he have over me then? If I only have gear over him, what does he have over me? He can. He has leadership. Leadership he how? He's shout. told you how to, he's, he's made a farm. Congrats. Is that going to help you fight 30 people? But what else do you have? What else do you have? Tell me. What else do you have? I'm much more experienced in a fight than him. Much more experienced in a fight? If I have the buff, I'm going to have double health. I have the best gear. I'm going to do the most damage. Yeah? If he has it, he's in iron. 
How is that better? See, look, Explain that to see, me. Look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's the way you're trying to get us to follow you. It's the way you're trying to get us to follow you. No, I'm not. Like, I'm trying to make us win. You. If it's him, we're not winning. <laughs> we're, I'm being realistic. If it's you, they're going to target you because you have the king crown and you're an iron. They're going to take it yeah, off that's... and then they're going to have two crowns. That's fair, honestly. I think... Yeah, you know what? I agree. I agree. Reluctantly, Starkiller's followers agreed that I should be king and he was crowned in the panda village. And there is your crown. Oh, yes, let's go. Oh, yeah. Let's go. My guy, oh, my guy is evil. The reign of King Eyes had now begun. So, the kings were now chosen, and it was time for them to lead their civilization through the next world event, the Blood Moon. This means permanent nighttime for five Minecraft days, and hugely increased mob spawns. So, the Blood Moon rose, and each civilization begun protecting their town center. Players quickly realized that it was impossible to clear out the enemies, and the majority of players decided to hide inside of their town's buildings. The ones who didn't were at a huge risk, and a player in the desert was caught off guard by a creeper. In the jungle civilization, most players were hiding in their town buildings waiting for the event to be over, but one player, allied with eyes, used this as an opportunity to lure Starkiller underground, pretending someone was trapped down there, and assassinated him. Oh. Starkiller just died! How did Star die? No. How did that guy die? Um, bug, I think. Maybe. While the people of the jungle paid respects in chats, I saw this as the perfect opportunity to take complete control of the civilization and make a decision that would greatly change his people's future. He decided it was time to go to war. The star is gone, unfortunately, so now it's me and Saitama as second in command. We're gonna go and prepare to assault Arctic immediately, so we leave now. We're ready to cross the border. The second blood moon. We should wait until the blood moon. Yeah. This was an extremely risky decision, as they would have to cross through a huge jungle and over half of the Arctic region. But since the coordinates of supply drops were recently broadcasted in chat, they had the exact location of the Arctic town, meaning this ambush could be hugely successful. In the Arctic Kingdom, their new king Chungledor used this blood moon as an opportunity. He wanted to gain resources and advance their civilization, so he gathered all of their players with the miner class in the basement of the town center, and they began exploring the caves below. Chungledor also elected a player named Soup as their general, and he decided to create a giant tunnel as an escape route. You wait for them to go through, and then like the last person just comes through and just like spams blocks, and then they can't like dig on you quickly. While another player created a trap inside of an igloo, as the jungle warriors moved towards the lake, two players were insta-killed by creepers. What? Ah, what? No! Bro, are we you guys- quick. We have to oh go now. God, bro. Cause people are dying. Yeah, we're not doing great on players. Yeah, I don't- I mean, everyone just became headless chickens there and didn't listen. Like, I was only seven of us here. What are they doing? And their invasion was immediately halted, with only half of their players successfully crossing the lake, as the rest of them decided to defy their king and stay in the town. We're staying here. They're leaving. Try to attack the Arctic. It's going to hell. Eyes was faced with a huge decision, continuing the invasion with only 10 players, or moving forward without them. Yeah, let's just start following me. Just start following me. We're going to be here forever. Following you. He decided the ambush was too valuable to lose, so he led his brave warriors through the hordes of hostile mobs, but after players were told not to go in chat, he snapped. Man, what is this guy saying? Don't go. Is this guy the traitor? I'm about to go back there and kill him. No, I'm going back and killing this guy. I'm going back and no, killing this don't, guy. Don't kill, don't kill him. No, he's dying. He's dying. I'm over it. I'm over it. He's dying. Is he? So, while his army waited at the edge of the jungle, he sailed all the way back to their town and threatened to kill anyone who didn't join the invasion. Yo, hello. I don't know who died and made you the leader, but get over here or you're dead. I Bro, if you don't do it now, you're going to get out here anyway. It's now or never. Hey, we're going to die from the Arctic, okay? Bro, I do, you don't understand. Go, go to the cords. And impressively, he recruited nine more players. This may have been against their will, but the morale of the jungle army was slowly increasing, at least until they reached the terrifying horde of mobs waiting for them on the beach. The army sprinted through them, with one of their players being eliminated, and their population falling even further below the Arctics. But during a blood moon, these were minimal losses, and after an extremely long and exhausting journey, the first party of players crossed into the Arctic region and waited for their second group on a hill as the blood moon was slowly setting. Put your hearts into this battle, okay? This will be- I'm putting my This will go down in history. I'm putting my soul into this. I'm putting my soul into this fight. Oh, yes. Yes! Trust me, G. But then, a player mentioned Starkiller, and Eyes wanted to stamp out any disloyalty. Starkiller wouldn't have been here. Starkiller wouldn't have wanted to do this. Who's saying this about Starkiller? Who's, who is it? Say it with your chest. Who is it? Don't be quiet now. Who's saying it? Who's saying this right now about, oh, Starkiller wouldn't do this? Yeah, I know Starkiller would do it. Have you
have you sit in the island until everyone else kills each other. They're all geared and they come and slaughter you like pigs. That's what they do. Listen, it is what it is. It's happening. It's, it's either now or nothing. Yeah. It's Let's now or nothing. Let's go now. Let's go now. Refocused on their common goal of invasion, the jungle army began crossing the icy tundra, slowly approaching the Arctic Kingdom. And after a long journey, they passed the ice temple and regrouped in a valley less than 100 blocks away from the Arctic's town center. I'm not gonna lie, we're kamikaze in this. Either we win or we don't. So don't let like, run away. Don't get scared and run away. We're going in and we're going in. That's it. With the jungle army spirits high. Okay, go, go, push, go, go, push. Go, go, go. The invasion begun. As the jungle army closed in on the town center, two Arctic scouts who were positioned on the hill immediately spotted the invaders. All right, we're gonna try to like just pick out noobs. I don't want to fight any big teams. Oh my god! Zoop. Oh my god! Run. And retreated back to their village to spread the word of invasion in a panic over the clear imbalance of gear in this battle. Wait, why do they have a Lytra and enchants? The jungle's king sprinted after the Arctic scouts, forcing their military general to block up his tunnel and hide. The rest of the jungle army descended into the town, and the people of the Arctic frantically spread the word of invasion. Guys, run! Run! run. Oh wait, run, 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 run! There's a huge group here. Then, without time to think, they retreated towards the dwarven fortress for defense. But the bloodthirsty jungle army charged towards them, killing the arctic players who weren't fast enough. Go on, go on. We should, we should get up. <laughs> No! The Arctic eventually arrived at the Dwarven Fortress, but their players panicked and didn't know where to go, allowing the jungle warriors to single out three more of their people. Oh, the lag. Oh, the lag. Oh, the... Oh! The remaining forces scattered into the forest, where Squid Kid was singled out and chased down by two players, as well as King Eyes himself, eventually falling to the jungle's seemingly unstoppable army. Yo! Let's go. The Arctic had lost over half of their population, so they regrouped at the entrance to the Dwarven Fortress and noticed that even their Among Us statue had been killed. An interesting intimidation tactic by the jungle. The remaining Arctic players started strategizing, but more jungle forces then emerged from the forest, decimating the remaining players. Uh oh, we're so dead. Uh oh, indeed! Uh oh, indeed! Mm. One player ate a Notch Apple to defend himself, but was so intimidated by the jungle that he didn't even fight back. The one remaining player from the group hid underground, while two jungle players menacingly taunted him from the surface. Hey, buddy. Play with me some Borbon. Oh my! We know you're here. Concluding the battle, King Chungledor was then slain, with a player named Ogobath taking his crown to confuse future enemies. Ogobath, how do you feel about eliminating the king? Oh, I feel, dude, I had it in the bag. It was simple. Back in the Desert Kingdom, the players had slowly been advancing, using this time to increase their military strength. They watched in chat as the Arctic players fell one by one. Oh man, Ice is not doing good. I don't think it's people. That is civil war. I think it's civil war. To be honest. But they assumed this was due to a civil war within the Arctic, as the jungle still hadn't lost a single player, making them completely unaware that they may be their next target. Uh, seven players, what the heck? I think they had a civil war. The jungle army regrouped, with their invasion being a complete success. They still hadn't lost a single player in battle, and had reduced the Arctic's population from 21 all the way to 5. NGL, don't want to hear about Starkiller, because uh, if we listen to Starkiller, we'd still be on the uh, we'd still be in our village eating carrots. So <laughs> Yeah, honestly, honestly, I like the guy, but good thing that he died. That once doubtful army were now completely loyal to their king. However, Soup, the military general of the Arctic, refused to call this the end, and begun scouting outside of the Arctic region, eventually finding a lone jungle player. Oh, I see, I see someone, I see someone. No way. This kid's dead. This kid is so dead. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's right, buddy. Drop your armor right now. Drop your armor right now. Drop your armor right now, I'll let you live. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, drop, 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 drop. Right now. Oh no. Oh my god. Right after the kill, I teleported to Soup and reminded him of a game rule that gave the Arctic survivors hope. Soup, here's what you're gonna do. It's a rule where you're allowed to join other civilizations, so um if you want, you can like you can like Can I inside them? No no no. You have to okay. be accepted by the king, but you can seek I right just I mean I just picked off a jungle by himself. I like completely betrayed him. His kill on the jungle player broadcasted to the desert civilization that this was in fact an invasion. The desert player broadcasted their coordinates to all of the Arctic survivors so that they could travel to their kingdom and seek refuge. So the remaining five Arctic players begun this extremely dangerous journey. Soup then crossed into the desert region and eventually crossed paths with another Arctic player. Yo, who is this? Oh, is this a skeleton? Oh, wait, who is this? Oh, is this an Arctic guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. We need to find the, the desert people. 
Yeah. After greeting each other, they continued towards the desert capital and spotted a player in the distance. Yo, hello, person over there. Slow down. Yo, hello. Yo, hello. Gold helmet guy. Yo, slow down, dude. With their party of three, it seemed as if they could get to the town safely. In the Arctic region, the king decided to search the town for any survivors, as well as the tunnel that Soup disappeared into earlier. But after realizing the remaining players were long gone, he came up with a plan of action against their new threat, the Desert Kingdom. The invasion had not only advanced the jungle's equipment, but their high morale and experience in combat was now extremely deadly. Unfortunately for them, the Arctic players joining with the deserts could turn the tables in military strength. So King Eyes prepared to stop that possibility. Yeah, yeah murder just, everything. Uh, murder everything that moves. That isn't us. Arctic. So the jungle army began charging towards the desert capital in an attempt to ambush them while joining forces, or even better, take out the Arctic before they get there. Soup and the other Arctic warriors were slowly getting closer to the desert capital and were on track to reach it safely until they spotted a player with enchanted diamond armor, and this time it was an enemy, and they were from the jungle kingdom. Yo, hello? Yo, yo, yo. Yo, 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 dude. Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Are you I'm, Arctic? I'm, Are you Arctic? I'm, de I'm jungle, okay? I'm jungle, but I'm here to make alliance. I'm, I want to join desert. I, I, I hate my, my leader. He's so cocky, and he's annoying. So don't I, think, I, just I, kill. Don't think, just kill. Just kill. Just kill. Just kill. 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 No, no, kill. 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 He's dead, he's dead. Showcasing his ruthlessness, Military General Soup backstabbed yet another jungle player and acquired full diamond armor as well as diamond armor for his teammates. We are still the core team here. We do not want Desert to win, we want to win. The desert capital was located less than 200 blocks away from them, just past the Terracotta Mountain. And the lightning from Soup's kill alerted the Desert Kingdom that other players were extremely close by. That sounded really close. Hey, that sounded close. Yeah. So a large group of desert players begun climbing the mountain to scout in case of an invasion by the jungle. They're all here, okay? They're gonna join. Pretend like we are on their side, okay? And they were quickly relieved by the sight of Soup and the other Arctic players. Nice. Jungle came in, they all had like sharp three swords, they had like insane gear. They came in, they got picked. Pool. And you guys killed none of them? Gosh. The desert were hesitant to accept the Arctic players into their kingdom, but after being informed about the power of the jungle nation, the Desert King decided to let them join. Listen, I'll take them, I'll take in these refuge for now, but if I see any shady activity going on, I won't hesitate to go. Little did they know, as this conversation was taking place, the entire jungle army were gathering on a mountain with a very clear view of the desert and Arctic forces. Guys, 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 is it over here? Over here, over here, over here, over here, go, 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 go. With their king leading the charge, the jungle army sprinted forward, catching their enemies completely off guard once again. The final battle had now begun. While Ice distracted the desert's strongest warriors, avoiding their attacks with his elytra, the rest of the jungle forces descended into the village to prey on the currently unaware desert players. Oh. oh my god! The jungle had now killed five desert players without losing anyone and the desert begun to panic, while Soup and another arctic player decided to completely ignore the invasion, with their loyalty still to the future of their own nation. I took the E table. They used this as an opportunity to steal the desert's enchantment table, I'm, gra I'm grabbing the loose so we can leave, but eventually assisted the desert in attacking the jungle forces, making them lose their first player. Look please, I had a cow, I had a cow, I had a cow. I had a Goodbye. The jungle army begun to take their first losses, but the king continued to destroy every single desert player in his path. However, the desert's strongest warriors begun strategizing, and after realizing they were being distracted, they decided to target the weaker members of the jungle's army, and using their overpowering gear, brought down the jungle's numbers one by one. In the village, the Jungle King's second in command then entered a house and was ambushed by two desert players, throwing an enderpearl to escape. But he landed on the statue of my head and died of fall damage, giving the Desert Kingdom even more gear. He died of fall damage! This brought the jungle army down to five players, allowing a group of extremely geared desert warriors, including their king, to 5v1 the Jungle King. He's dead, he's dead. Nice. Eyes then dropped his sharpness through netherite sword. So now he only had a trident as his weapon. And when things seemingly couldn't get worse for the jungle king, the abstract zombie escaped from his boat and started chasing Eyes, joining the team of eight desert players who were trying to take him down. Why is he a zombie? What? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the abstract zombie angrily charged towards the king, determined to get a kill for his nation. But the king's hope returned when he noticed Soup in the distance, who decided to betray his desert allies and assist the jungle king. Soup! Soup! But they were completely outnumbered, so they tried to escape into a cave system. You can try to kite with me. Come in here. Come in here. Get in this cave. Get in this cave. Get in this cave. Okay, we actually got Yeah. Ah. Okay, we actually got Yeah. Nice, nice. Get his stuff, get his stuff. No! The remaining jungle players were then spotted in the desert's town. One was instantly eliminated by Invictable's fire sword. The other one managed to escape the mineshaft, but was quickly taken down. This left the jungle kingdom with only one player, who was somehow completely lost, and I found him next to the world border. But I crowned him as the new king of the jungle, and gave him the task of winning for his nation. Jack TBC, I have a I have a gift for you. Alright, you are, you are now the new king of the jungle. There is your new crown. Now win! Sorry, how do I win? You just kill, uh, just all 11 of them. That yep. sounds easy enough. Where are they? With the TNT that he collected, he traveled all the way to the desert capital and hid inside of a building, but the desert army spotted him immediately. Wait, the last jungle guy's over here. And he tried to run and was captured, then brought to the desert pyramid. Inside of the pyramid, their notorious zombie warrior was waiting to finish him. As a last stand, the jungle player attempted to explode the pyramid, but this didn't work, and he was backed into a corner while their zombie slowly approached. Have you ever heard of Genshin? Die! Have you ever heard of Genshin? Die! <laughs> no! No! Abstract! Yeah! So, the Desert Kingdom had achieved victory, defeating the warmongering jungle nation that I was kinda rooting for. Let me know in the comments which civilization you liked the most, by the way. The Desert Kingdom lived happily ever after, building giant structures, fertilizing their lands, and expanding their borders. They definitely didn't immediately explode their own capital. And that is all. Hopefully you guys did enjoy my first Minecraft Civilization video. If you want to see a sequel to this, then leave a like down below and let me know in the comments. Don't forget to check out some of my other Minecraft stories on screen right now, and I will see you all later. Peace.